The Undergarden is a dark, subterranean world located deep below the bedrock of the Overworld. The flora here has adapted to their conditions and can grow anywhere. Independent of light. Strange creatures call these dark lands home and are plagued by the invasive rot spawn. Monsters originating from a chaotic, mysterious realm. This is the Undergarden. Before we begin, if you enjoy this video, you can show support by leaving a like, and if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell. This helps me out and keeps me bringing great content to you. Thanks so much, and let's get right into it. Here I have pulled up a crafting recipe, and you may be wondering what this is, and this is for the catalyst. In order to make this, you're going to need one diamond, four iron ingots, and four gold. It's a very simple recipe, and we're going to go through it right now. So here we go. We're going to put the diamond in the center, surround it with the four iron ingots, and then surround it with the four gold, and as you can see, we get the catalyst. The next step is building the portal. This is done with stone bricks, and it is the exact same dimensions as a nether portal, so it will take only 14 stone bricks in order to build. After that, we come down here, we grab our catalyst, we have to click on the bottom two blocks, and we've lit the portal. All right, let's jump in. Right off the bat, the first thing that I noticed when I spawned into the Undergarden was how much this realm fits into its name. It truly does look like a garden that has grown underneath the bedrock. It's dark, it's a bit foreboding in a sense, but it's also quite beautiful and very lush. This is quite the environment. The mod creator obviously put a lot of effort into the detail and atmosphere here. One of the things that you'll notice when you spawn into the Undergarden are the Stoneborn mobs. And these are a mob that's essentially native to the Undergarden. They're sort of the first creatures that came from the Undergarden. And there are additional creatures that are sort of like things that came in after that made life a little bit difficult for these Stoneborn guys. Another thing to note is the flora here is just absolutely gorgeous and we have one of these rot walkers down here and rot walkers are intended to be invasive they don't get along with the stoneborn and they are very hostile toward each other and as you can hear they make some incredibly creepy sounds as well Another feature of the environment in this realm that I wanted to make note of are the platforms or multi-layers that sort of look like floating islands, even though technically they aren't. But it makes the entire realm sort of look like a cave, a giant cave that has grown underneath the bedrock. And there's quite a bit of detail, but it also has this sort of fantasy, almost otherworldly look to it. So here we have Utherium ore, Frost Steel ore, and if I come all the way over here, there should be a Clogram ore. Yes, right here. Clogram ore. Frost Steel ore, I have only found in Frost Field biomes. Clogram I've seen in multiple places, and Utherium I've seen in multiple places. So these are all of the tools and armor and blocks that you can make with Utherium. 
This is everything that can be created with the frost steel ore or frost steel ingots. And these are all of the things that you can create with the clogram ore. One of the mobs that I wanted to highlight are the Gwiblings. These are a fish-like mob that live in water, or water-like environments. And if I hop into survival mode right now, and then hop in, you'll be able to see that they are passive. And if you kill them, they drop these raw Gwibbling, which you can eat. This scary looking fellow right here is a rot beast and they can hit pretty hard and we're going to test that out right now. So allow me to put myself into survival mode and you will be able to see just what kind of a wallop they pack. So they hit pretty hard, almost as intense as an iron golem and they are quite formidable but not impossible to defeat although you're probably going to want netherite armor when you take on these guys so now we can spawn in a stoneborn and even though these guys look like they are friendly they really are not and we're going to see in a moment i'm going to put myself into survival mode and i'm going to get closer than i should So as you can see there, they kind of explode without warning, and it's a pretty intense and jarring explosion. So I decided to do some experiments with these mobs, knowing that the rot spawn and the stoneborn don't particularly like each other. And I found that these two didn't initially attack, but then the stoneborn decided to explode without warning, and made the rot beast very upset, as you can see. Then I put down the Rotwalker and the Stoneborn together, and they immediately started fighting with each other. Which I thought was pretty interesting. What was also interesting was that the Rot Beast came over to defend the Rotwalker and went right after the Stoneborn within an instant. At this point, I decided to spawn in another Stoneborn to see what would happen, and this Rot Beast immediately went after the Stoneborn, but the Stoneborn won. So it seems like there are times when, yes, the Stoneborn can win, and other times the Rot Beast will actually win. And even when you're in creative mode, the Stoneborn still have a chance of exploding. The first of the two biomes that I want to highlight is the Frost Fields, and this biome is absolutely gorgeous. It's layered with snow that just makes it look really pretty. There's also these packed ice columns that give it a very kind of interesting and unique uh, feeling. There are some rot spawn as well that sort of spawn throughout. And the whole biome has this very pretty but also very cold look to it. There's something very just ominous about it, and there's also this frozen part of the lake, which is very interesting, too. As a matter of fact, uh, um, I can show you right here, the frozen lake, it's not just like a top layer of the surface of the water that's frozen. It actually goes all the way down to the floor of the lake, which is very different from vanilla Minecraft and frozen rivers or oceans, so this makes it incredibly interesting. Additionally, this is a biome that extends really far, so it's quite large and there's a lot to explore. The second biome that I wanted to highlight was the Mushroom Bog. This is by far the most unique thing I have ever seen in a Minecraft mod. There are several different mushroom species, ink mushrooms, we've got indigo mushrooms, veil mushrooms, and also blood mushrooms. And what's really cool about the blood mushrooms is that they have these blood mushroom globules. And to be honest, I don't really know what you do with the globule, but they just look so cool. But one thing that you can also make with the blood mushrooms themselves, the blood mushroom plants, is the blood mushroom stew. And this is another um, thing that you could actually eat in this biome. 
Additionally, one other thing that I wanted to show you is that you can also grow these mushrooms similar to how you would in the overworld. So hitting it with bone meal enough will actually grow you a blood mushroom. So this right here is a potion of virulent resistance, and the way that you make this is by brewing a gloom gourd into an awkward potion, and you get the potion of virulent resistance. There's also the potion of brittleness, and the way that you get this is actually by brewing glowstone into a potion of brittleness that you've already made, and that one is made by brewing the blood mushroom globules into an awkward potion. So even though it seems like these potions are complicated, they really aren't because it's still the one-step and two-step process with vanilla brewing. So the first potion that we'll test out is the potion of brittleness. So I'll drink it here, and you'll see that potion effect comes up, and it looks like a broken bone. So that's a clue to what it does. Jumping from five blocks high with brittleness causes me to take two hearts of damage. Without brittleness, I take a half a heart. Now I'm going to dig a hole and put the virulent mixture in it. And then I'm going to jump in. And as you can see, I am now poisoned. So I'll drink the potion of virulent resistance. And as you can see, I have the resistance, but I'm still poisoned, so I have to wait for it to stop. Now that the poison has gone away, because I have the resistance effect, I can jump right into this gross-looking purple liquid and take absolutely no damage or poison effect from it. The one and only structure that you can find in the Undergarden are the Forgotten Halls. And this is absolutely fantastic looking. It's made out of different kinds of depth rock. Depth rock is a really lovely looking building block as well. And the best way to get in is to look for an opening like this one here. It's a very maze-like structure. The hallways are very narrow, even though... They're built with a lot of stairs and a lot of detail. They're still very narrow, very claustrophobic, very creepy. There are rattling spawners all over the place. Sometimes they're on top of chests, and you can't open the chest if the spawner's on top of it. So you would have to break the chest in order to get the loot that's inside, or risk breaking the rattling spawner as well. So I decided to go this way. While I was exploring, and I did notice that sometimes you can see shiver stone in between some of the blocks, which gives it a nice, interesting look. And I did find one chest here which has these regalium nuggets inside of them, so that's a nice little find. And again, you can't open that chest either. So I continued on, and I found something that was really interesting. These... Forgotten Guardian mobs. These guys are formidable opponents. They are very scary, and they can hit really hard. And I decided that it would be a good idea for me to gear myself up and actually take on one of these guys to see what would happen. So here I am in my full netherite armor, no enchantments, a shield, and a netherite sword with sweeping edge and sharpness on it. I set myself into survival mode, and I figured, let's uh, test this out and see what happens. It took him a minute to react to me, but once it did, um, it did a lot of damage, and I noped out. I did go back into creative mode so that I could actually kill him to see how long it takes, and it takes quite a while to kill this guy. He also drops at these forgotten nuggets. One thing that I do want to make note of with the Forgotten Nuggets, when I was going through JEI to understand what you can make with these, even though you can make the ingots out of the nuggets and vice versa and make the Forgotten Ore Blocks, the tools themselves do not have crafting recipes, so they are most likely loot table items that you can only find in chests or from killing mobs. 
The Undergarden is a stunningly beautiful mod that incorporates so many different aspects of Minecraft to create a brand new experience. So I want to thank all of you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, then feel free to subscribe, comment, and like if you want to see more. And as always, I will see you guys next time.